Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So today's video is going to be an answer to a viewer's question. So Toby Lynn Robbins 6683 asked about four or five days ago, uh, what is the motivation for William, uh, Prince of Wales, uh, and his press office to continue issuing harsh public statements about Harry and Meghan still? So that's her question. Then she suggests several different reasons why not. So I'll just tell you right now what they are, and then I'll ask them again uh, for the cards. But she says, is it because uh, William disagrees with the philanthropic philanthropic uh, organizations they support? I don't think so. But is it out of jealousy because Harry has freedom from the institution? Hmm. That could be subconscious. Uh, is it to elevate uh, William's own philanthropic work? I don't know. Uh, is it to disrupt any attempts at reconciliation between Charles and Harry? Um, and are there reflections, I put this in there, are there reflections of, of the problems that Diana had? Because it seems like when uh, William was a child, he was the one always telling his mom, oh, calm down, oh, don't uh, get involved with all this stuff. Uh, he kind of tried to play a peacemaker. And I think he's realized that didn't work, but he's, that's still his modus, op modus operandi. But is it because Harry outdid William's aggressive behavior towards Megan and himself? Is it a revenge? And then, is anyone going to help William uh, or help him get some help? And uh, why doesn't he just live his life as Prince of Wales, future king, be happy, and let Harry live his life and be happy? And uh, Toby Lynn says uh, that, uh, I guess this is a woman. Uh, she's read uh, people accusing uh, Will you know, of drinking excess alcohol to cope with all his negative feelings and stress. And um, But it couldn't really be true, could it? Well, we're going to ask those questions. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, you know, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So we are going to talk about uh, the Prince of Wales, uh, William, and uh, see what is the, why the ongoing animosity? Uh, why can't he just make up and be happy with Harry. Maybe it's not even his responsibility to do that, but you would think that the more prominent of the two should take the lead, just like the parents should take the lead of the child, perhaps. I don't know. But they are brothers, so there's that. So we're going to jump in and ask those questions. Why? Why? And, uh, you know, I think I want to ask another question. Is this actually what's happening? Is William uh, doing these things that Toby Lynn believes that he's doing, or maybe a lot of people believe that he's doing. So it's an interesting problem. Um, obviously, if you have siblings, you have to know that there are times when you just really disagree with your siblings and it can be bitter feuds and it can last for years. And uh, so let's find out what, 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 what is going on with Harry and William, or I guess I should say William and Harry in this, this kind of silent, feud. Um, so that's what we'll do today. But before we do any of that, we're going to have just a moment of meditation. Okay, Will, William, what's going on with you, William? Why can't you let Harry rest? Or, I mean, I'm not going to address it in this video, but it could be that Harry's the one turning the screws and causing this uh, this problem. Um, I don't know, but then Harry's the one that left, isn't he? Of course, he could. William can't leave. I mean, really. So, let's ask the cards about William and Harry. William, not William and Harry, William, William only, William only. Let's ask the cards about William. What is the deal? Why, why, why this animosity? Why can't you reach out and make things better? You should be the bigger of the two, or maybe not. <laughs> so, and uh, just, I've got the questions that uh, Toby Lynn uh, sent me right here off to the side. So if you see me looking off to uh, refresh my memory, 
you'll know what's going on. And I expect that's going to happen a lot. But the first one is, what is the motivation for William and his press office? But I think we have to leave it down to one. We're just going to talk about William uh, issuing uh, harsh statements about hair. You know what? Let's do this. I want to do a full Celtic cross, but first, okay, we'll do uh, three cards on this first question and a full Celtic cross to deal with the rest of those uh, issues. So three cards. Why? William, why? William, why? Why can't you find a way to solve this rift? Okay, so Ace of Cups. This is Cups are emotions, compassion, uh, you know, hugely emotional situations. The Ace of Cups is just a great big offer or a cup full of emotions. And you can see in this card right here, I mean, look at it. This is a turbulent ocean. Uh, even the fish look disturbed. Uh, it's a huge cup of, of emotional situations just overpouring. So this is telling me that for William, this is really super emotional, as it should be. Second one, Four of Pentacles. Now, Pentacles are value. They can be money, but this is about value here. And you can see this person right here is, is, is trying to balance on top of these Four Pentacles. Do you see them right here? Protecting the, the treasure beneath. And uh, this squirrely little person right here is outside that, um, that uh, protection. Uh, could that be Harry? So the Four of Pentacles, it's hugely emotional. He's trying to hold on to if not his value, perhaps the monarchy value. And then the final uh, card for to get us on the road is this Three of Pentacles. And the Three of Pentacles is, um, again, with value, but it, it's, it's building something for public display. The Three of Pentacles is typically taking uh, whatever your, your value situation is and with the collaboration of others, building something up for public display. But if you'll notice in this card, so we had the squirrel made an appearance here and here we still have the little squirrel, such a small figure in the background and with the other people collaborating with, this has to be William, on uh, putting something together for public display. Could it be that he feels like what he's doing is protecting the monarchy's image for public display? I'm going to go with kind of that idea as we go into the rest of this. Now, if you're not familiar, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to tarot, you know, a Celtic cross is a 10 card uh, spread that helps you decide um, the uh, answer to your questions at where each position in the Celtic cross has a specific meaning. And the first one being a signifier, a uh, signifier being the main motivation towards the question that you're asking. So we're going to pull 10 cards and then go down the list here and see if they kind of get defined in uh, in this uh, spread here. So we'll do six cards first and then another four. So William, why? Why, why, why? Um, what's, what are the reasons for your not just putting an end to this, stopping it? First card. Are you ready? Okay. Signifier card. This is the signifier of the question. Why, William? Why? Ah, it's a tower moment. That's perfect. Perfect, absolute perfect card for this question. Um, the tower card is destruction. It's the complete end of a cycle, okay? It's a rethinking of how we're going to make this, this, this structure work again. Because once we have an end to a situation or a cycle, there's a new beginning coming up late. But this is complete and total destruction. So the signifier card for this, for William, is, I think, preventing this, this complete annihilation. The challenge to it, though, is, look at this, the Queen of Cups. So the emotion comes back into it with cups. We've got this Queen of Cups, a challenge to this uh, destruction of, of the tower, the main uh, edifice, is uh, this Queen of Cups. I want to say it's Catherine. The challenge to this is Catherine. Could she be on the silent side of maybe uh, trying to temper the situation uh, between the brothers? I've always said that Catherine is the one who's carrying the water for that royal family. You remember, she's the outsider who came in, was embraced by the family. They love her. She became a royal, full-throated, full of support, it seemed. And, uh, and so there we are. So Catherine is the challenge to this um, 
avoiding this destruction, it looks like, in Will's mind. In Will's mind, let's remember that. The basis of this whole thing, the basis of the issue, is the Six of Swords. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And you can see here, this Six of Swords is moving out of troubled water, moving into calmer water. So the basis of this is to get things moved on. <clears throat> you would think that to get things moved forward, you'd want to calm the water and, and not keep causing ripples. Is he just not able to do that? The, um, the past of this reading then is the chariot. The chariot card is a major arcana. It's number seven in the, in the major arcana. You know, there's 21 steps in the major arcana and it, they represent the steps the fool takes on his journey. And the seventh step is he comes across this chariot where things are moving really fast. But in this uh, display here, this is the past. So things had come on quickly, apparently, for him. But that's in the past. The sky of this is what you would aim for is the Three of Cups. Again, emotional cups and celebrations. So this seems to me to represent the aim of all of this is to get to a point where things can be celebrated um, emotionally. Maybe that's not going to happen. But that's the aim. Is William just going about this the wrong way? And then the final outcome for the first part of this Celtic cross, because we're going to do four more cards, is going to be right here, the King of Cups. The final outcome is that William will be the king, but this is a king loaded with compassion, emotion, and sensitive feelings. That's kind of interesting. So uh, before we go over it all again, let's get the last four cards of this uh, Celtic cross and see if they lend some some answers here. I may even do a couple of quick three card draws after the whole thing to address some of these questions that uh, um, Toby Lynn had specifically. Four more cards to finish this uh, this reading. Uh, let's see, so we'll do them one at a time. So the, um, the very essence of that question then, why Wills, is this two of swords having to, okay, swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. The two of swords is having to make a choice in what direction you're going to go. And you can see that this wolf is patiently uh, stalking this person who has a very uh, apprehensive, almost scared expression, trying to decide which way they're going to go. He's still not sure of himself as to how to handle this. And the safest thing seems to be what he always adopted uh, in those situations with his mother, Diana, is just trying to uh, ignore it, uh, put it back, get it out of my out of my face. Um, the um, signifier for that is the Page of Cups. <clears throat> Page of Cups is interesting. Again, this drawing is loaded with cups, loaded with emotion, and that seems really appropriate. But the Page of Cups, you know, when you consider a royal court, you got the king, the queen, the uh, knight, and a page. Those are the royal members. The page isn't really royal, but he's in the presence of the royal family. And the page brings a message. He's a messenger. He brings a message to the royal uh, theater and says, okay, here's what I got. What can you do with this? And so the uh, clarity in this, uh, this question is compassion. Can we bring a little compassion to this? The hopes and the fears for William in this regard is this two of cups. I guess has, this has to be hopes because this would be the two brothers making up. And then the final outcome, the very final outcome for all of this uh, for Wills is this temperance, finding a balance. So it looks like his heart, his head, some part of him is really into finding a solution for this. And it looks like maybe his method isn't quite right. He needs complete obedience from Harry, which he's not going to get, it looks like. So we'll go over this again, then we'll do a couple of three-card draws just to address some of these uh, questions that Tobolin asked. So um, the signifier card of this thing with William is the Tower card. He's trying to avoid the destruction of the monarchy. And the challenge to that is this cool, calm queen of compassion. So it may not be Kate, but it could be the idea of this cool, calm compassion. Look at the waterfall just, just you know, f um, dominating the scene behind this calm queen. So she has a calm exterior in front of a very turbulent exterior. So the challenge to saving the monarchy is to find this calm compassion. I think that's a better 
uh, definition of that card. The basis of all of it is to move the monarchy into quieter, uh, untroubled waters. The past is how quickly this came on. The sky of this is finding a celebratory way to bring the uh, emotions of everybody back together. And it may be something that's just outside of Will's grasp now. Maybe always. And then the um, uh, final outcome for the first part of this read then is that he is the king and he needs to be the king of compassion, the king of cups. The signifier of that question for uh, this, the very essence of that question for Will, is this two of swords, which way are you going to go? What choice are you going to take? And it looks like once Will's has set off on a path, he's not going to deter from that direction. Stubborn. Um, the um, challenge to that then is this page of cups, which is just it's a small message of compassion as far as he's concerned. Not really worth taking a lot of uh, notice of. The hopes of the fears, the hopes would be, is that there is a reconciliation. He does want a reconciliation, but it has to be, I think, at the expense of Harry. He's not going to give up any one inch of the monarchy's um, uh, position on this, especially while he's not the monarch. And then the final outcome is finding that balance. So he's lost. I think he's lost. I think he's stuck in an old uh, routine and he can't get out of it right now. Perhaps once he's the monarch, that might give him the authority in his own head to do something more. Because obviously at this point, he's got to take uh, his father, the actual monarch right now, he's got to take that person's lead and, um, and use that in making his decisions. So let's see what, if we can address some of these, uh, two or three of these questions very directly that Toby Lynn asks. And she says, um, is it the, the disagreement of the philanthropic organizations? I don't think so. Is it out of jealousy because Harry uh, has uh, the freedom from the institution? Um, let's do the phil phil philanthropic um, aspect of this. Is it philanthropy? that is the sticking point for William. Is it philanthropy that's the sticking point for William? Three cards. One, two. Something ahead wants me to just do two cards, but I'll do the three. Um, is it philanthropy? First card. Five of Swords is um, an abuse of power. Truth, justice, rules, and law. Hierophant. The Hierophant is the, is the method or the, the way a thing is governed. You can consider the Hierophant the, uh, the uh, government or an institution that, that determines how the people um, who are following that institution are going to behave, really. So is it philanthropy? Abuse of power, following the institution's guidelines, and again, Two of Cups. There can be a joining of those uh, philanthropic uh, um, measures. I don't think it's philanthropy. So the next one is it out of jealousy because of Harry's freedom from the institution? Is it jealousy because of Harry's freedom from the institution? Let's see. Jealousy? Two cards. One, two. Is, is Will not uh, not having the ability to solve this thing about jealousy. Well, it's the Ace of Pentacles. This is Ace is huge. Pentacles are value. And no, this is, and look at the squirrel here. The squirrel is tiny little. This is William. He has the value. Harry needs to realize he's just a little squirrel in Will's mind. Uh, the next one, move, and, and, and as the man in charge of the value, he wants to move this out of troubled water. And I think the best thing he knows right now to do is just ignore it. Um, he's not addressing the issue head on. So that's that. Um, let's see. Is it revenge? And is anyone going to help him uh, get past this? Is it revenge? Oh, and then the last one I want to ask is about, is there alcohol use? So is it revenge? And is someone going to help him get past it? Uh, four cards. Is it revenge? Two cards here. And will someone help him? get past it. Okay, is it revenge? First card. Ah, this is a new 
this seems to be a new direction for Wills to go off on. And he's headed off. The fool is just beginning this journey. Wills, in many ways, is just beginning his journey towards the crown. And, you know, the fool is going up you know, with a full heart, trusting everything, but he's about to step off the ledge. And typically in this uh, card, in other decks, you see a little dog, which for me kind of serves as the conscience of the fool, trying to maybe help him avoid a pitfall or uh, mistakenly push him forward. But the, the thing is that uh, it's this, this new journey. And the Knight of Wands is that he feels like the, uh, the, the Knight is the fighter for the royal court and Wands are actions of plans. So as the Knight of Wands on this new journey, he feels like he has to make a plan forward. Um... And then for the last part, um, so what were my two questions? I forgot already. This is the problem with me. Is anyone going to help him? Yeah. No. He feels trapped. So this Eight of Swords represents someone who, and remember, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And as this Eight of Swords, this even looks a little bit like Will's when he was younger, is feeling trapped, surrounded by all that. But what you don't see in this card is that this person isn't actually trapped. If you look right here, they can walk forward. They can inch forward and get out of trouble. Look at this bull in the background, really blocking the path going back. The fire blocking the path going back. He only is able to go forward, and he's able to go forward, whether he realizes it or not. And then the final one here is the Page of Pentacles. That page coming up again. He was carrying hope in the form of a cup before, but now he's carrying the value. And he's saying, he's saying, listen, there's value in this. Why don't you consider um, taking this other path? The final uh, thing here is the alcohol. Is William using alcohol as a crutch, and uh, is that affecting his judgment? Is William using alcohol as a crutch? I think uh, that royal family is known to like to have a, uh, you know, a little something to, to to drink occasionally, but it doesn't seem like to excess. But is alcohol causing a problem for William in solving this issue? with uh, Harry. Three cards. Is it alcohol? Is it alcohol? First card. Look at that. It all comes back to him on his new journey, William's new journey. I love it when the cards repeat because, I mean, that's pretty remarkable that uh, the cards repeat when you've got all these cards to choose from and it comes up again. You see I thoroughly shuffle them and put the cards back in, in a random manner. But this is about William's journey this new journey again it's, that's the point of this he's trying to find his way and avoid a misstep uh, the eight of cups is having to leave something behind of emotional importance you can see here that this eight of cups again cups remember emotion compassionate situations there's a spilt cup the rest are stacked up upside down the rest are empty there's one cup left there's a few scraps on the table and one cup is gone. So the thing about the Eight of Cups is remembering that even though you're going to go off in a new direction, there's something to help sustain you. And then the final card is, will he get help? That's, that, that's the help. And uh, the Knight of Pentacles, again, is just feeling like he's the fighter for the value. It's a difficult situation. I think once uh, all of us, once we have an idea in our head that we're right, a lot of us are very hard to be swayed onto a different path. He's hard-headed. There's a little bit of compassion on the table that he could take advantage of uh, if he chose to. We're not in a full moon. We're only in a half moon here, and it's all about this new journey. I think he's just trying not to misstep, and sometimes it may seem like the easiest thing to do is to do nothing at all, and I think maybe that's what's going on. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So Modern Spellcasters Tarot, Melanie Marquis, with il illustrations by uh, Scott Murphy. Beautiful cards. I mean, they come in a really nice box with that magnetic uh, catch that's embedded in the inside the, uh, the box itself. And uh, the uh, guidebook is very useful. Um, it doesn't, you know, the pictures are nice. It's a full color guidebook. And um, the descriptions here, they are, in fact, very useful in, di in dividing the cards. So I have to say, even for the price of the cards, just because you got this guidebook, this is worth the price of admission right here. The cards are, in, are very nice. They're useful. They're a familiar size of card to use. And they're quality on the back and on the front. And you're going to see that this artwork goes right to the edge of the cards. 
and uh, it's intuitive. They're right on the money with the Rider Weight system, and um, they're just fun cards to use, and they f and they feel good. And uh, then um, so if these, uh, if you're kind of into uh, spell casting, or even even if you're not actually, um, these cards are um, very nice to use. So that's the Spellcasters Tarot, Melanie Marquis, and Scott Murphy.